Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night, September 2nd, 2025 is the date. It is 9.07 p.m. California time here. Uh, latest activity shows a, a little 1.0 across the West Coast. Also, uh, some movement around the uh, Russia area. It does look like we got uh, another earthquake coming in here to the uh, Kamchatka area of Russia. Um, this earthquake here, though, at 2038 was a 5.3. Uh, that is not what's coming in right now to the seismograph station here. So, uh, looks like maybe another uh, five or so coming into the region there. Either way, quite active up here. This is the region that had the 8.8 .8 earthquake back in July, uh, the largest event there in some time. Nine earthquakes. Uh, looks like two five-pointers out here in the last 24 hours, so uh, quite a bit of movement. I can't say with certainty that this is done and over with as far as a larger scale potential goes. Uh, that did not completely rupture uh, this area of the Kamchatka Trench, so there's always some concern here that uh, there could be some further larger events out here. We'll definitely have to watch that. All right, moving off here to the west coast. Up around Washington area, you got a couple earthquakes coming in around the Mount St. Helens region, it looks like. A little activity up here the last week or so. Got a little swarm going on here. This is at Mount St. Helens, not Mount Rainier, where that uh, swarm of uh, probably 15 to 20,000 earthquakes or so uh, struck out there in the last couple months. Now, those are just events that uh, the majority of them were not um, able to be located. Uh, but there was quite a few that they did locate in that earthquake swarm, but uh, that was a, definitely a big swarm. Uh, but right now, 1.1 coming into the uh, Mount St. Helens area. I do want to see if we can spot that on the seismograph station. I'm sure it is uh, viewable. By the way, 161 epicenters of tremor here, northern end and the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So Mount St. Helens, we'll check this out here real quick, see what we got. That earthquake coming in there to the southwest um, of that volcano. I do want to see if it's being picked up on this seismograph station there. There it is. I believe that's, well, let's take a look here real quick. That was at 2057. Uh, so... 2057 so that is not it 2057 is going to be roughly oh it'd be awfully close here to the 2100 time period so I'm not for sure either they got the time wrong uh, but there's definitely an earthquake here maybe one here uh, in the previous UTC time which still includes afternoon time and this morning there are a number of earthquakes out there across Mount St. Helens um, but I want to kind of want to see if we can spot this earthquake down here. Let's see if uh, the seismograph station picking it up. 21, or it'd be 2056. I'm guessing this one, but there's definitely some other noise out there, some other earthquake activity being picked up. This is a instrument adjustment. And again, this is at uh, Mount St. Helens there in Washington. As far as Mount Rainier goes, we'll double check that as well. Nothing really shown up here on the map, but they've seemed to um, stopped uh, reporting the earthquakes out here. The, some of these may be some uh, ice quakes uh, due to the glaciers and whatnot up there, but there's definitely earthquake activity still across that area. Uh, and that specific region... Uh, really nothing showing up there on the map, even though there is definitely some earthquake activity showing up uh, on those seismograph stations. So we'll continue to watch that. Even a couple earthquakes there around the Mount Hood region recently with a little swarm as well. Uh, just pretty active out there. Uh, nothing big, but it's interesting here all, how all these uh, volcanoes there across the Cascades just showing a little bit of movement all at once. There's a couple earthquakes out there in the uh, Pacific Ocean off of the Cascadia Megathrust area. Some twos. That uh, probably stirring things up down south here to the southeast, putting more strain across the southern end. That's why we're seeing elevated tremor activity down here today uh, into the subduction zone, that is. Nothing new to report out here across the Northern California region after a couple earthquakes there this morning. Uh, Bay Area pretty quiet. 
Southern California, well, not a whole lot going on. Some movement down south here into the Baja California area. There was a 4.2 late last night and a couple other smaller quakes down there. Uh, but really nothing above 2.5 out here across the uh, a good portion of California. Up in Nevada, still rock and rolling out here it looks like. A uh, couple more threes, almost a four-pointer there this morning. Last one, a 2.5. That brings up the total tally here to about 47 earthquakes with really, uh, I don't know if there's been any main quake or not. You know, for, for the most part, we would see like a five-pointer and then multiple aftershocks in this range, but there was really never no main quake. 4.8 is the largest event out here, but we had a number of fours in there as well. So a little uncertain on where this is leading, but we'll continue to watch that out there in the uh, Nevada region. Yellowstone National Park, a couple earthquakes there in the area this morning. Uh, let's go double check, see if there's anything that we need to look at. And we'll check this seismograph station out here. I can already tell there's not a whole lot going on. A couple local events, but really nothing big. Some intermittent uh, data loss there. Uh, the rest of the country, oil fields still rocking and rolling out there. Nothing new to report in that region. Uh, look at this cluster of earthquakes down here. Quite active across the region, including down here across New Zealand. A 4.3 earthquake coming in this afternoon. This is going to be my time, of course. It's going to be a different time there locally, but that's just off the Alpine Fault, South Island region. Uh, still leaving this region here open for some larger movement. Uh, I do think New Zealand's uh, could be on, on the cards here to see some uh, larger uh, adjustments soon. A lot of time has passed in certain regions out there across New Zealand um, since the last time they've had some big earthquake activity. But this is uh, pretty active out here. A lot of movement up and down the plate boundary here all across the region. Some deeper earthquakes there in the Tonga Trench. A lot of surface adjustment going on there across the Vanuatu area northward. Uh, one region that's been somewhat quiet is the uh, area here around Japan. Surprisingly, not, nothing really showing up. Even though we got a movement north and a bunch of movement south, that should put the squeeze out here in the center portion. Uh, so we'll watch that overnight. Uh, there's 4.5 there off the coast. Uh, let's see where that's at. Morocco area, it looks like. Yes. Actually, it's inland. Uh, for 4.5 within the last hour here. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot uh, going on out there in that uh, area. Alaska region, a couple smaller quakes out there, but it looks like things are tapering off in that, uh, in that area of the plate boundary for now. But uh, we'll definitely watch this area around Russia, New Zealand. I mean, it's, it is uh, pretty active. I was waiting to see if that earthquake there in Russia was going to show up on the map, but um, I don't see it showing up right now. The 5.2 earthquake showing up here. Well, 5.3 now. Uh, was there a secondary earthquake? 902? I guess that would match that. 902 right here. So there was technically another a uh, another five pointer up here because there was a, just a 5.3 back at uh, 8:38 uh, California time here, uh, and now a uh, well it looks to be another 5.3 at 9:02, and I just showed you guys there on the seismograph station that one coming in. So things are yeah they're still ramping up out here. I don't know if we are done yet with the larger adjustment across that region. Uh, on US, one of the uh, social media posts there that USGS put out with that 8.8 .8 earthquake last uh, July mentioned that the earthquake there that struck, uh, you know, large damaging earthquake, mega quake, but it did not fully release the area out there uh, as far as the built up strain. So there's definitely uh, some concern there that uh, we may not be over yet in that region. All right, uh, let's see if there's anything else going on. Let's go check Hawaii real quick. Of course, the eruption kicking up this morning. Uh, Kilauea Volcano here. Uh, are we working? A little slow at night, I guess. Let's see if that eruption, episode 32, is still uh, in action out here. 
I don't think it should be for much longer, but look at that. Beautiful. Still got quite a bit of uh, volume of fountaining going on. There's the uh, lava flows there starting to fill up the uh, summit crater area. That uh, definitely uh, beautiful. Looks like there's three distinct vents out there. And that's up at the Kilauea Volcano. Quite a bit of flow out here. Look at that. Let's see what we got here for the uh, deformation data. It should be coming to an end pretty soon. Um, let's see here. We're way down there. That's interesting here. Even with the, uh, the volume way down in terms of deflation, we're still getting a lot of output. So... Even more so in the, than the previous runs here. The, this is, the lion runs right about here, it looks like. So we're way lower than our previous eruption, episode 31. But uh, it should come to an end here. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. Either way, that's up there, the Kilauea Volcano, Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, it does look like they've downgraded that 5.3 that came into a 4.9. Either way, there's still quite a bit of movement happening there. Space weather activity, I wish I had some good news there for the Aurora Watchers. Uh, earlier in the day today, this was lit up quite nicely, but uh, it looks like it's being suppressed again uh, as the North American side here of the planet uh, is in the, uh, uh, in the dark, so to speak. Uh, and that is the culprit right here. Got that closure going on. Uh, earlier this uh, this afternoon, this was wide open, allowing the auroras to kick up. But since then, uh, pretty much closed up. But also at the same time, it does look like the um, solar wind speed is kind of dropping off as well. But uh, man, I know a lot of people were hoping for the auroras tonight. Uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen unless things uh, decide to open up there and allow the um, activity to stir up. But I don't think that's going to happen. As uh, far as flaring activity goes, uh, really nothing major going on. I did drop my flare threat um, a little bit lower than what I've had it at because of the sunspots out here. They're starting to dwindle a little bit. This one's still got a little bit of complexity, but uh, nothing like what it had here a number of days ago back when it was coming around the uh, southeastern limb here. Uh, but that's going to be out of sight, out of mind here pretty soon. And we're going to be left with um, a couple sunspots, but really nothing of any major interest. We've got one sunspot here, looks a little complex, but uh, that's going to be uh, 4210. Uh, but really not all that impressed with the uh, sunspots right now. M flare threat's been dropped a little bit there to 55% chance, X flare around 15 or so. Um, I've dropped mine down to about 5% because the, the conditions do not warrant uh, the elevated activity. Uh, there is a coronal hole facing us here, number 75. Kind of got a southward tilt, though, in relation to the Earth-Sun plane. Uh, so really not all that concerned with uh, any major solar storms uh, resulting from that high-speed uh, solar output from that hole. But I'll watch that here in the coming days. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, really nothing major going on there across the board. A uh, quick glance at the numerical models. There's not even a whole lot loaded up out here. Um, let's see, though, with what we do have. A little hurricane off the coast there of Baja, California. That's going to dwindle. And maybe Arizona might get a little bit of moisture from that. Uh, but aside from that, I don't see anything coming in yet. Uh, this goes to just the 10th of September, as these uh, have not officially loaded all the way up yet. But uh, I'm kind of, we, I think we've been pretty fortunate out there as far as any uh, hurricane activity. Hopefully it stays that way. All right, uh, let's see. I think that's about it, folks. We'll just keep an eye on things here today. Let me see. Or this evening, I should say. That's quite a bit of fives there uh, throughout the last 24 hours. We got six, seven, five pointers, and a couple close to the 5.0 range. That's a l actually a fairly moderate to heavy day of earthquake activity out here in terms of the multitudes 
Um, nothing big going on, but man, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of uh, moderate quakes out here in the last 24 hours. So just keep an eye on it. Pretty active out here across the West Coast in terms of the multitude counts as well. There's really, as I mentioned earlier, there's nothing above 2.5, but there's definitely quite a few earthquakes out here. You can kind of see it lighten up across the West Coast and through the Cascades up here. I believe we're seeing those elevated earthquakes there across the volcanoes and the Cascades due to the strain and stress out here. Definitely uh, associated with the Cascadia subduction zone and um, that strain can transfer inland. All right, I'm going to call it, folks. Um, uh, seismograph stations, there's that 4.9 on Russia. That showed up a little bit there on the Japan station as well. But really, it uh, looks pretty quiet for now. As far as anything uh, coming in, have yourself a wonderful evening, everyone. And we will see you guys back out here uh, for the Wednesday morning update. Hoping for a good night of sleep. So, fingers crossed. Have a good one. Take care.